So we're moving next to Chris McRae, um, who will be presenting a track on the different chart patterns, whether that is T-squares or grand crosses, <coughs> yards, all these different um, chart configurations. So just one moment, I'm gonna have, Um, Chris, is your video on? Yes, it is. Okay, great. Now we see you. So tell us more. Tell us more. Well, thank you so much, Maurice. You know, I've been to just about every Oprah retreat since the very beginning. And I want to say that each one stands out as being as exciting and inspirational as the previous one. Except the last one was rather special because of its uh, location at the magnificent Zion National Park, uh, where the new one is going to be in 2020. Uh, okay, uh, at uh, an OPA retreat, uh, along with various topic presentations, we do get a chance, or students do get a chance to spend several hours with a teacher on a specific topic. And as Maurice has just told you, I'm going to be talking about special patterns in a chart. Uh, these dynamic signatures uh, are going to be examined for both the challenges they bring as well as the resolving rewards. How do you manifest the productivity uh, of a T-square? And how do you maneuver the unexpected direction of a yacht? <laughs> <laughs> you know, even if you don't have one natally, you're certainly going to get one by progression. And this, uh, with, uh, by progression, excuse me, and the slower outer transits. Uh, your patterns will be brought into the discussion. I'm going to get your birth data before you come to the retreat uh, so I can do up your charts with the progression, just in case, since some of you may not be familiar with it. Um, you. Um, you, it's important to know if you've got something churning around in your chart right now, uh, because we know this guy is very potent, uh, very, um, uh, very potent right now, uh, and um, uh, we are taking a very close look at it, all of us. You know, Christopher did give us an expanded backup field for something. I'm reading something on my screen here. I'm just going to ignore it. Is it okay if I just keep moving? Maurice? Yes, what was on the screen is the description of your track, but if you want to move to your slide, I can load them. It doesn't matter, you can just kind of follow, and <laughs> this is kind of a, a, a jumbled up situation because we have such a complex sky uh, right now. But anyway, let me carry on. Christopher gave us an expanded version of Jupiter, uh, of course, using Jupiter keywords uh, that we enjoyed, at least I enjoyed very much. Uh, Susan added more Jupiter uh, in its new field of action coming into Capricorn and its relationship with Uranus. And I'm going to move us into an expanded version of our time. I look at the present sky at the present time, and I call it the Capricorn Revolution with Jupiter's promise. Uh, actually, we shouldn't have that slide up right now, Maurice, mm -hmm. because it will, that, thank you very much. I didn't want the other one to be distracting. So carrying on, this is a time of endings and beginnings as three great planets move through their balsamic phase, pass over the galactic center for universal scope, and into Capricorn to form th the three great conjunctions, as everyone knows. But there is more than that to this present massive onslaught into Capricorn. I would love to have uh, to take us back to the 1990s when Uranus Neptune started its 171 year cyclic unfoldment, unfoldment in Capricorn. This is an enormous creative impulse to bring to light influences that are shaping our new paradigm. The Industrial Revolution uh, um, assembly line um, and, and assembly line factories changed the world into a global community, but the internet changed us into a global village. 
<laughs> I think it's amazing that I can talk with somebody in Australia as easily as talking with my neighbor over my garden fence. You know, folks, this staggers me. All right, moving on. Then in 2007, we know transformative Pluto entered its 14-year transit through Capricorn, ready for what was to come. We went through many aspects, including the prolonged Uranus-Pluto square. Then we have eclipses, the moon's nodal axis crossing Cancer Capricorn, the south nodal eclipses. Tell us, we got to clean up the past. We got to find out more about what is no longer applicable. We've got to move into a new era. Our security is shaken, but we must learn to go with the flow. As amazing as it is, will Saturn and Pluto have conjoined their planetary Capricorn South Node? This is where we can look at the other slide, Maurice, uh, for a little touch of data here. Um, Jupiter um, South Node planetary position for the year 2000 is, was at 2017 Capricorn. Pluto, as we know, is sitting about 2126 Capricorn right now. And Saturn's south node planetary position near 2000, 2338 Capricorn. And today, Saturn is at 1759 Capricorn. But lo and behold, here comes Jupiter also on its planetary south node um, at 1029 Capricorn. This happens, of course, in January. The reason why I bring these up, because these are pretty potent. They sit on these degrees for, um, oh, probably some, they move so slowly, they sit on those degrees for between about 75 to 100 years. These are, by the way, uh, not allocated, they're, they're allocated heliocentrically, um, which gives them this very prolonged position. Okay, now, Capricorn. Just a few key words about Capricorn. It's structures. It's the structures that, uh, no, we won't use that slide. We'll just stay on that one in case anybody's taking data down. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maurice. Um, Capricorn is structures. The structures that we build into our lives, both singly and collectively, that bring us security on a day-by-day -day basis when we get up every morning. Structures also include corporations, companies, governments, and all our surrounding environment. But Pluto the Transformer says, I'm going to change all of that. Some structures aren't working anymore. So a major shift is necessary. It cannot be avoided. We've got to go with the flow. If it brings a job loss, we find another. New skills may be required, building again from the bottom up. This is going to be much easier for young people who will be the agents of the new paradigm when they do reach their age of influence. I'm seeing so many of these right now, and I've seen some brilliant young people uh, coming in um, or that are in their 20s and 30s, early 30s right now. Uh, those people that are in their 50s and 60s are going to find um, somehow they'll find it harder to find their new place. Then we have this older generation like myself. We have to get used to this new paradigm. There's new banking systems, internet banking. My goodness, I haven't been able to bridge that one yet. Uh, there's going to be the loss of our neighborhood banks. There's going to be new currencies coming in. All of this that my generation has to get used to, these new systems of handling our economics. And now, Jupiter. Let me show you something. Planets in the Earth form our personality. And the first planet that comes after Earth is Mars. And Mars's job is to invigorate, to motivate us to go beyond our individual insignificant self, uh, to go beyond the present, and to grow in understanding, influences, and evolutionary purpose. Jupiter is a link to all of our outer experiences in the here and now social environment. We've heard many key words today and we'll hear many more. It rules expansion, gives us a desire to believe in something. 
its event in Capricorn is, of course, stabilizing. It gives us the opportunity to uphold, it is the opportunity to uphold principles, cultural differences, religious intolerances. This is so important in the present environment of cultural integration as millions run from violence seeking uh, asylum. Jupiter rules inflation personally, nationally, and internationally. So as we extend our individual credit, so do nations seek expansion either in trade, extending their borders, seeking riches, as well as the capacity to function on credit. With Jupiter's position in Capricorn along with Saturn and Pluto, it highlights, it's probably going to highlight more so the inflated debt awareness, particularly the inflated governments, as well as inflated personal credit cards. Saturn is limitations and Pluto is uh, the renovating agent. Jupiter is the lawmaker passing new forms of legislation to correct structures and premises that no longer work as Pluto demands. It is the national intellect as well as our individual higher mind that brings insight through knowledge, principles, concepts, and multicultural awareness. In its extensive global influence, its out outreach is vitally important in how we negotiate and pass legislation that can affect many nations. After the Jupiter-Saturn Great Conjunction, we know that Jupiter first conjoins Pluto in April, June, and November. This is uh, a 12-year cycle. Liz Green said that at Pluto's discovery, something dark from the psyche came to light. But let me bring in a few words about Pluto. Destruction, construction, elimination, regeneration, tearing down, building anew. It is the very power that can create change and purge old, deep-rooted problems. It is also a creator stringing forth new beginnings and new life. The expansive principle of Jupiter and Pluto's intensity that we could call this a power surge or even an obsession. Will it create benefit and goodwill or will it continue to cause more chaos and destruction? The truth must be revealed and that which is hidden must be understood. It could begin reconstruction and rebuilding. How much social consciousness can spring out of this? Then, as we know, Jupiter goes into, uh, joins Saturn at zero degrees Aquarius to stay in the air element until about 2159, when it completes its mutation into Scorpio. Thus, its first air advent, advent occurred in 1980 as the electronic age began shaping itself. The Jupiter-Saturn 20-year uh, conjunction spends a couple of 100 years in an element, then mutates into a new element. Then we get the great mutation of 795 years. But this is a whole topic unto itself as Jupiter and Saturn form 20-year cycles that Charles Jane called the great chronograters, it's a hard word to say, uh, of time. So thank you, uh, Chris. But I wanted just to say that all great conjunctions, put up that last slide if you would, uh, Maurice, all great conjunctions have been a study, a great study of mine for many years, mm -hmm. and it's culminated in a book that is at the publishers right now. Um, hope you don't mind me giving a little plug yeah, for it. Absolutely. Uh, Great Conjunctions, Shifting Times is the name of it. There's no publishing date right now. So thank you very much. Uh, we're all racing to get all of our ideas into a short space of time. And we thank the audience so much for um, uh, staying with us as we expound our ideas. So thank you very much, Maurice. Thank you, Chris, and thank you for taking the time and sending us, you know, your tireless work 
of us studying astrology, teaching astrology, you've been one of the most recognizable uh, teachers I know in Canada and across the world and through, you know, working so, so closely with ESAR and developing so many programs. So we are privileged to have you as part of our faculty and really look forward to next spring together in your time. Thank you, Maurice. And you know how much I've always loved Oprah. Opa. Oprah. Opa. <laughs> well, okay. Opa and Oprah. Yes. Anyway, thank you so much. All right. Thank you.